Hard? Mm -hmm. yes. Right. That's the F. And this skill is a must. Especially if you're new to public speaking, you must learn this skill. Because otherwise, you won't be interesting. People will feel uncomfortable when you're given the speech. You've probably heard you maybe great scientists, and there was somehow you weren't really connecting with the message. You knew they knew a lot, but, but for some reason, it wasn't interesting. So you got to learn this if you want them to listen and feel what you feel. So the F in the fear, these are the four tools, stands for feeling. Feeling fabulous, feeling fantastic, feeling that way you want to feel when you hit the stage. If it's an ideology, you probably don't want to be like, hey! So, so you match it, but generally speaking, it's good to feel positive. So how do you do it? Maybe you have a war raging inside of you, what am I gonna do to, to really calm those nerves? Because the more calm you are, the more calm your audience will be. The more confident you are, the more confident your audience will be. The mirror neurons kick in. We start mirroring people very quickly. So you gotta learn the skill. So what I do, I just did a warm up out here, I always do that. And one of the tools I use is breathing. And I learned it from the champion. We have a Danish guy called Steve Severin. He's a world champion in free diving. He has his own institute in uh, breathing at the University of Copenhagen. He can hold his breath for 20 minutes. That's pretty crazy. So he knows a lot about breathing and he says, this technique is the best to get energized. So I need uh, somebody to come up here on stage and help me. A participant, it's, it's gonna be easy. Yeah, come on up here. Somebody on the side as well. Yeah, awesome. What's your name? Rickon. Rickon, you just stay on the side. We can't give him a big hand. Go ahead. So it's just to help you guys see what's going on. So I'll just do the exercise and we're going to do it all together afterwards. So it's like this. And you, you, you take your breath in, and you take your arms out, and you hold a little bit. And then you breathe out. It's actually on your breath out. You get the relaxation. That's when you start triggering the vagus nerve, which is here, connected to the fear center. We heard from Ivan a little bit about today. Connecting to the heart, the lungs, our organs. So when you trigger that nerve, you start relaxing. We can do that all together. You, you, you understand it? You're comfortable with it? Rina, you got it? Yeah. Okay, and you got it? Yes. Okay, so everybody please stand up. And you have your guidance all around you can see all people doing together with you. All right. All right, your arms up. Arms out, everybody. And then breathe in with your nose all the way back. And hold it and in and out. a big hand. Fantastic. So you can use this obviously before you hit the stage. And, and it works wonders. Up to about two hours. You have the date with that wonderful person you want to meet. You can also do it for a job interview. There are so many situations you can do it. But what do you do if you are at a conference? <laughs> right? That's the problem. You can do the mini version. Just keep your arms back and breathe. And, and most people are afraid to hold the pause. So the pause is the most powerful thing you can do. It's during the pauses your audience learns. And Time up here goes about 10 times faster. 
So you're okay slowing down. So rather go too slow than too fast. And if you have a row of speakers, they can be like, wow, this guy slows down. Like you guys are good, so that's a big problem. But if you go to a conference, if you work in a company, like chill out, mate, you know? But it, it, it's because the hormones or, or adrenaline is really kicking in. So don't be afraid to take the pause and breathe. What also happens is you get plenty of air and voice is partially air. Basically our voice is just air coming out here and vocal cords vibrating. So my background is engineering and say, okay, that's 50% of the voice. Uh, air coming out, the other 50 is vocal cords <laughs> vibrating. So you get that as well, it's just a huge bonus, plus you get relaxed. So that's the, the first tip I wanna give you. The, the second is, now we learn about how you can use the body to really connect, but also how can you use the mind? And one of my big fans, she's called Marissa Peer, great uh, psychotherapist, uh, you can get, watch her on YouTube, she has some great videos, and she says, you have, if you want to really tune your mind into to, to power and confidence, you have to start talking beautifully to yourself, positively to yourself. And I was always like, yeah, is that kind of right, you know, this stuff. But then I saw one of her videos, and she did an exercise that really convinced me this works, and I want to give that to you. And the trick is you say something positive, but it also has to be true. So if I'll be like, yeah, I'm the best speaker in the world. <laughs> okay, I'm not there yet. <laughs> maybe one day, but, but it has to be truthful. But, and maybe some of you, maybe that haven't been up here speaking or new to Toastmasters. How do you do that? How do you find something beautiful? You can always do that. It could be, I come well prepared. I know my stuff. Or it could be, I come with the best intentions. So you find these beautiful things. And the exercise is really, you, you wanna say something beautiful to yourself and then you take your fingers like this and you, you, you say the beautiful thing and you feel the force. So everybody, I want you to do this with me. You find something that's true for you and positive and then you say it. You say it out loud, that's better. I want you to expand that comfort zone Okay, are you ready? Did you just find that? Okay, good. One, two, go. I'm strong. I am. I am. Uh, I come well prepared. I love public speaking. <laughs> not everybody does that. And then you can do the negative, and you feel the difference. And you say, I'm not a good speaker. I'm. Uh, I, I haven't prepared well. Try it at home, and at least if you didn't feel the difference here. In your, could you feel the difference? You could. All right, how many could feel the difference? A few people. I bet you if you try it at home, in your own comfort, it, it's gonna work. For everybody I've tried it to, it works. Uh, and now we're gonna combine it, we're gonna do it together with the inspiration of, uh, what is it, Ivan? Or you? You have the power post guy. Uh, we're gonna do that because I believe the power post works, but combining it with the words, it's even better. So everybody please stand up. We're gonna do this one together. You say something beautiful, which is, and you say after me, I'm bold. I'm bold. I'm brave. I'm brave. I'm beautiful. I'm beautiful. I'm beautiful. One more time, when you really kick in with your lung, you're gonna use all your power. I'm bold. I'm bold. I'm brave. I'm brave. I'm beautiful. I'm beautiful. So the choice you have to make before you hit the stage is, do you want to leave it up to chance to feel good? Or do you want to deliberately make a choice, increasing your odds of feeling good on stage? Most people leave it to chance, know that. But if you do this, I guarantee you there's a bigger chance you can connect with your audience, create that great feeling. Because you come powered, fueled up, and the mirror neuron kick in for your audience. So that's the F. The next part is something that is beautiful. 
And if you start doing this, people will be like, that person is born to stand from the stakes. You might not know why, there's something about the person. It is very powerful. You can be like, let's say this greatest speaker that's kind of okay, a little bit boring. This is good. And then if you call it Lil Posai, <laughs> right? Because it's kind of Lil Posai speaker. It's like, whoa, man, this is hot. So how do you do that? How do you then connect with your audience? Uh, I call the E for ego for two parts. One of them is you want to see your audience because they see you. And how do you do that? The best tool by far is eye contact. You've probably heard that advice tons of times. Do great eye contact. What is that? Most people, or a lot of people that will scan the room. They'll scan the room. And what does an animal that's in danger do? It's just scanning the room. What can I run away? Or danger, like, oh, I can run that way, I can run that way. It's the same here. It's like, oh, how can I escape? Because our reptile brain is always on. Always thinking in survival. So if you're not feeling comfortable, you're like, okay, what can I, what can I get out? What are the doors? Subconsciously, you notice that with people. And that's also if you walk into a cafe, for instance, you'll notice most people will be sitting so they can see the door. How do I get out? This is the most comfortable situation. You don't want to have people in your back. So you always be scanning the room. But you don't want to be scanning the room. So we're doing something more powerful. The next level. It's one to two seconds. So you gaze quickly, boom, okay, I connect there, and you go quick. But that's like level one oh. You want you want to go deeper. Because I want you to really love your audience more than any other speaker. I, I really mean it. You've got to love your audience more than other, and, uh, any other speaker. And care for them. Because if you can do that, they're like, oh, I want to follow that person. So one to two seconds, and if you only just have two minutes, it's not enough with short eye contact. I was just talking to one guy out here who is sleeping now, and he had a two minute uh, pitch, and he was saying, I didn't connect. So I didn't really promote my idea, he said. Um, so you want to do more. You want to do three to five seconds. And it's easy. You just look. And you want to be sure you don't eyeball, uh, eyeball the person down, because that's a little bit intimidating, right? So you soften it with a smile. That should be your standard gesture. Of body language tips, this is the best. Smile. You always hear have your arms open and big gestures. Good. It's awesome to do that. But smiling. All the face, facial expressions are important. A little soft smile. It doesn't have to be call gate smile all the time. Oh, well, you can do it every now and then, right? So, so smile and then do three to five seconds. So I want you to find someone you don't know so well. And we're gonna do we're gonna do eye contact. Practice that and we look at each other. And I'll be counting. So everybody, please find a partner. <laughs> Say that you just start, but so I'll be counting, and you you find eye contact, and I start counting now. Thousand and one, thousand and two, thousand and three. So these are three seconds. Were you ready, or should we do it again? Do three seconds one more time. I saw people weren't ready. Thousand and one, thousand and two. Three. So now you have a feeling what three seconds are like. But I want you to do five because the NOL is five. 
Three to five. Okay? Well, we got it. Are you ready? Thousand and one. Thousand and two. Thousand and three. Thousand and four. Thousand and five. Five. I have even a bigger surprise. I want you to be able to go out of your comfort zone. We're going to do seven. Just for your comfort zone. Alright. Okay, you ready? Thousand and one. You ready? Thousand and one. Thousand and two. Thousand and three. Thousand and four. Thousand and five. Thousand and six. Thousand and seven. Give yourself a big hand. Saw something beautiful. Yeah. yeah, you did. What did other people see? Smile. A sparkle. A sparkle. You did that. Yeah. Yeah. Softness and kindness. Softness. Warm. Warm. You see yourself. You see yourself as well. That's true. You do. You do. So, so you see both the other person, the warm, and you see yourself. That's why it sometimes can be hard to do because you see yourself. If you're not confident and comfortable sharing these things and comfortable in your own skin, it's hard. And what all of you said were things you see on the inside. There was nothing that was like outside. So it's a way to really connect with the audience on the inside. And you see, it becomes much deeper that way. So this is the trick, really eye contact. Oh, can, I, can I right here? So, this, yeah, I, I stole it for a moment. <laughs> so, E is ego, and it's eye contact. <coughs> so, how you then connect on? Uh, this is the non verbal way to connect with eye contact, with smile. How do you then connect verbally? That's the trick. When you're up here, you want to be comfortable sharing your first times, not the first time, but your first times. Uh, if you're comfortable with that, you're, you're good. You're good. You don't need to train. Um, you want to be comfortable sharing your faults and your fuck ups. So these are three F's. Your first times, because typically the first time you do something, it's not very good. I remember my first speech in Toastmasters stuff. It's out in a heavy room, it's old school. And I prepared this great opening. I thought it's a chill out opening. I'm gonna take them with a storm, lay everybody down. Because I'd seen how the other people did it. And then it came up, I thought, oh, how you doing? So I couldn't take that pressure. So that was my first time. And then obviously through training, I hope it got better. So be comfortable sharing those first times because people, maybe they're in your place and be like, hey, I'm here now. And then you can later share the story of how you went on to beat the dragon and then conquer the whole kingdom. But, but it's a bad story. If you start, I went out and killed the dragon. Okay, no problem. So the three F's, being comfortable sharing them, you are really a long way. So three F's. Here, uh, I forgot to mention one thing with the eye contact, because when you're here, a lot of times you will probably feel self-awareness. You start thinking, oh, my audience is bored, what am I going to say? You have all the thoughts running in your head. How many have tried that? <laughs> Negative self-talk. It's, it's pretty normal, right? So what do you do then? How do you get around that? Because you cannot not think about something. If I say to you, don't think of a pink elephant. Okay, wait, that's taken. Do too much. We're gonna use green tiger. So I say, don't think of a green tiger. What are you gonna think of? Yeah, so what I do when I start having this negative self-talk, I just connect with somebody. I do with Marianne, connect with her, 
phone, I'm ready, I'm in my talk, I come present. So, so just do that, do that one trick, connect, 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 and you're gonna be good. It's so easy thing to do. This your fallback strategy is always eye contact. Eye contact, eye contact. So, so this is really the trick. Focus in that way. So it's actually three eye contact plus focus. Yeah, that make sense? Good. This next part is, for me, something I find very beautiful, this A. But before I share what the, the trick is, I just want to tell you a little story. This is about a year and a half ago. It's a summer morning. At the time, I'm having, I have twins. They're about a year old. And I have my daughter. She's four. So as you can imagine, sleep is not big on my schedule. <laughs> right? Um, and I was invited to do a morning presentation at a networking event with about 100 people, CEOs and all you know, guys suited up. And I thought to myself, hey, I'm pretty experienced. I can handle this. I don't need to do the, the, the warm up, the feeling. Because I've done this, I thought, I'm, I'm gonna take my sleep and prioritize that instead of the warm up. So we get to the venue, me and my business partner, Astrion. And as I'm sitting there on the table, just being introduced by the, by the lady, I start getting really nervous. Just heart start beating, I have nothing warmed up. And then I say to Astron, I'm nervous. And he goes like, I know. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's the adrenaline. I'm like, Astron, I'm thinking, you gotta say something positive. Like, you can good, man, you can do this. I'm just getting this. I know. So obviously, after about two minutes, there's a guy up on the left up here saying, you're wrong. And I just, I just really didn't connect with my audience because I, I couldn't stand the pressure. So I'm just warning you right now, don't skip the warm up. Uh, it's a little trick, it has nothing to do with you, uh, but most people, <laughs> uh, that, most people are very positive as a speaker. When you come out, they want to hear you. So that's the general, uh, idea for people. But every now and then there is somebody negative. And they're usually sitting up uh, on the left, by the way. Sorry, it's over here. You guys have a problem like this. Uh, I see here over here. So they'll be sitting up front, preferably a little bit to the left, because it's nice, comfortable, and you can throw out the comments. They won't sit in the back. It takes too much energy, and, and they, want, they want to be able to see the room, okay? Am I taking this over? They want to take over the stage. Maybe they are, um, they want to be speaking. So, and he was sitting there. So I went into a whole bunch of research about that, strategies for handling that. So anyway, I took an apple after the, from the buffet, went out on the street, and just hammered in the, in the floor because I was so mad at myself, because I had warmed up. I was even mad at them, and like, why, why, why are they so mean? And I really had to think. So I went back home, spent about two days thinking, this thing with a couple of speakers over here, is this for me? I get this nervous, I get this thrown out from just one event. So what I did is I called my good friend, Michael, uh, the owner of Danish uh, Neuro Coaching Center. I talked to him, I said, uh, yeah, I had this problem. And he said, you know, everything we, we receive has a reason. So that fear was there for a reason. But what he also told me was then a story he went to, to England to do some training. And one of the one of the trainers there, she had been a guest speaker on Tony Robbins tour. Tony Robbins, you know him. Very yeah, he played, and very successful speaker for about 40 years. So he had he had a warm-up and he had he has a trampoline. So he jumps uh, before and says, I have something to dine in all four. I have something to dine in all four. Obviously, I don't have a trampoline. <laughs> So uh, I do another kind of warm up, but I'm just thinking if Tony has to warm up, I have to warm up as well, and probably you as well. I would suggest. So that made me really think. Okay, I got to do the warm up, and I can do this. I can learn this. I can get better. So I started accepting that there will always be some fear as well. Uh, because what he told me, Michael, was that 
things are there for a reason. They're there to help us. So now when the fear comes, I don't run away from it. Like I did that morning. I didn't really want to say to myself, yeah, I was nervous. I was like up to the last minute, I can do this. I'm big, I'm strong, I'm bold. It's going to be okay. But then when you're really in the fire, it's good to have done the warm-up. So um, just know that your fear, don't run away from it. Stay with it. It's kind of like talking about your problems. And when you do that, for some reason, they often get smaller. And you know that, right, from experience. Talking about that, they get smaller. So I take out my fear here. Oh, 30 minutes. Okay. Um, 30 minutes uh, is left, by the way. <laughs> Good to know. So I take out my fear and I say, okay, you're here. You're trying to help me. You're trying to do something good for me. But I want you to help me in another way. So don't numb it. We do that so often with food, alcohol, television. Some do ultra marathons and, and other things. Just really take that in and, and let it feel. It, it's based on a psychological a genre called acceptance commitment therapy. So there's a whole bunch of research behind it. Um, so don't be afraid to, to really get into that. So the A for me stands for accept. Accept the fear. Once you start doing that, things will change. Okay, let's make a little experiment. Let's play that this chair is your challenge. It's your problem. Um, so what do most people do? They stay here in a comfort zone. Because it's nice, comfortable. And there's nothing wrong with being in the comfort zone. This is where you get energized, you get refreshed. And then people stay here because it's quite boring after a while being in your comfort zone. So people go over here, the problem. And then all the excuses come out. Oh, I don't have time. Oh, I don't have the money. This is not for me. I could never do that. I go back here to the comfort zone. Ah, oh, cool. Nice comfortable. Stay here for a while. Right? And some people stay here forever. But then some other people be like, ah, it's still boring. Let me give it another try. They go over here. There you go. And then what they do is they pick up the carpet, they carry around the problem. I, I used to do this. I used to be scared. I'm so scared. I'm, I'm so scared of public speaking, but it's getting better. So I used to walk around with the problem. You know, how fast am I walking if I'm walking with this heavy chair on me? Not very fast. So then every now and then you will meet people that are trying to give you their problem. Like here, <laughs> That's what happened that morning to me with this guy. Uh, not you, Sid, <laughs> You guys are the best. I love Toastmasters, by the way. Um, you guys always clap, you always support. So that's good. So they're trying to get it to you. And I, I was stupid enough to take it. I took the problem. And it, actually, when you take this kind of problems, it can take quite a while to get rid of. So, so don't do that. Just if, if you have a negative uh, thing people are trying to give you, get it. That's their problem. The complainers, it's probably because they have more problems themselves than, than you do. Know that. They, they come from a hard place. Take them with love and just know, okay, they have their own challenges. So, um, this is the other kind. The other kind are those that, that have the problem over here. So I run around with a problem, but I don't have the problem. I'm okay, you know? And then, you know, everybody can see it. But, yeah. <laughs> where is it? I don't know. So that's where a coach can, can help you. See your own problems, your own challenges. So, 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 Get rid of that problem. What is your fear? Think about if you thought that every, every failure 
was not a failure, but feedback. What would you do then? If you saw a failure as feedback, what would you do? Raise more. Raise more. Raise more. Yeah, okay, so this is the question I have for you. Share that with, with the person next to you. If you start really getting in touch with your challenges, with your fears, by sharing it with someone else. So my, my challenge for you, I'll give you a minute, I know it's short time, but just to get this started. What is your fear that, that you want to get rid of? So take a minute with your partner, what is the fear you want to get rid of in terms of public speaking? A minute, go ahead. Go. Fear is actually when when I give a speech and I'm not nervous. We should talk. Like uh, <laughs> because then then it means like um, it's not that important for me and I feel like I'm failing or I will be failing. So every time, actually, all the speeches I've given, I've been nervous. I have these gut feelings, but it's a good way, like good kind of nervousness because it's important. Sure. I want to deliver. Sure. But if I show up someplace and don't have that, like, nervousness, then I know it's going to go bad. Okay. Yeah, that's so you got to be nervous, that's anyway, yeah. <laughs> 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 this workshop. Give it a big hand. <laughs> so accept your fear and your failures, and you're really going to move much faster in public speaking and in life. It's going to make a big difference for you. So the, the last part I have is the R, and this is something that most people don't do. But all high performers do this. At the moment, I'm coaching someone. She's been a professional speaker for 20 years. We are just talking on the phone this Friday, and we were talking about how she was practicing her speech and how she wanted to make it. So how she does it, first finding that big idea. You wanna have typically one big idea for your speech. And then she was breaking it down, like how do I get that big idea? 
making a few slides, and, and then she said, then I just practice, 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 practice. So humble, very good speaker, professional 20 years, very good talker. And it's always amazed me 